Hello, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jack Dempsey, historian and novelist. In People of the Sea, a wild-hearted prehistoric man named Sweet Wine fights to go forward by the light of his Minoan visionary sister, killed as they strove to resist the conquest of their people's ancient life. With many loved ones sailing at his side is a bright little orphan named Zoe, her nose cut off by the spite of Crete's new masters. A mountain youth who lives in honor to fight their lawlessness, but fights their way and risks his soul. A woman who will forge new civilized links out of ruins from Cyprus to Sicily. And after so much hardship and success in a new land, here come the first Israelites, from Samson to Samuel. That's some of the human beings who live this story. I'll also be sharing excerpts from it in another video here. Right now, I'd like to share with you two reasons why these ancient tribes called Sea Peoples matter to us now. And you can see if I fail my promise that new discoveries and facts about them offer us a very empowering, positive new heritage that can give us a legacy of hope. Flash! The real roots of Western civilization are much older than books. It was only about 3,500 years ago that Certain mistakes in our cultural history turned our first long original age of achievements into a needless cycle of catastrophes. We know it familiarly now as the rule of kings. A People of the Sea is an adventure story at the root of those crucial times. It took 20 years to bring this together out of archaeology and multicultural myth. But here we are in a time when it's crucial to pull back the curtain on mistakes that we can recover from. So here's the first reason why these ancient peoples are important to us now. Their long past, once we know about it, opens the door for us to a whole new positive inheritance, one that can point us in proven ways toward the world we say we want. People of the Sea tells the days that began the Old Testament Israelites, but from the point of view of their so-called sworn enemies, the Sea Peoples, the Philistines, whose name still appertains to the land we call Palestine. Now, where did they come from? How did they see the world? What was life about to them? Well, they've never been heard because they changed the story at the foundation. Let me give you an only fair summary of what we know about the Sea People's ancestors, meaning mostly Minoan Crete, from about 3600 to 1400 BCE, their first and longest period of Western civilization. In a phrase, we got it right mostly the first time. Minoan Crete in the middle of the Eastern Mediterranean had its world's highest average living standards. Their fast advancing technologies and arts were built on long, close observation of nature from agriculture to astronomy. Yeah, they had a military. No, they didn't live by war. Their social world was a free, landed, gender egalitarian middle class who tended family tombs for centuries, a matriculture, a woman-centered democracy of their family's political will. Traders, athletes, intrepid explorers, farmers, builders, inventors, astronomers, artists, Manly men, unafraid of powerful women. They knew how to hold local differences together by building magnificent centers of public festivity and ceremony all over their rich and beautiful island. The Minoan Central Way was a calendar of sacred festivals, a cyclic path of life eternal, rooted in nature cycles and their families. At the same time, those cycles and ways serve to keep kings or any individuals from ever getting too much power. A culture this advanced and no kings in sight? That's correct. Our timing of Olympic Games and our four-year terms of public office are remnants of these realities. While the later democracy of Athens left 90% of its people, its women and slaves cut off from any share of public life, even Crete's dark age kept practicing the rule of law, not elites and tyrant individuals. The scientist word for Minoan political community is hierarchy, meaning a sharing of power that reconciles different points of view. And every time tremendous earthquakes shook the Minoans' towns flat, they always rebuilt better than before. Now the connection is 
This was all still going strong when nothing but bad luck came down on Crete, the Thera volcano disaster, and then the mainland Mycenaeans' conquest of the island. This shattered the Minoans' way of life. This changed the Western story for us and took us down the road of repeating disasters. It started with the heroic ways of Crete's warrior conquerors, known as the Mycenaeans, for whom the title Sacker of Cities was high honor. Surprised, in less than one quarter of Minoan time, they wrecked themselves. See the works of Homer. The catastrophe cycle begins. Now we know clearly today that over new generations, many post minoan people fled away from these changes into new places overseas, and that included Palestine, where they built new lives according to the old successful patterns. And that takes us back to the peoples of the sea, to the second reason why their humanity dismissed for so long matters to us now. Their roots in Crete and the Aegean, the endurance they showed through a dark age, the advanced civilization that they carried by memory into Palestine, their model of multicultural well-being, and yes, the basic ordinary value of their imperfect human lives, this is the end of the Bible's model of the world for us. These post-Minoans and Aegeans as Philistines were the first to be turned into uncultured, warlike, soulless brutes, the first faceless bad guys and scapegoats of a monological fiction that creates disaster. But when we know, when we can feel these people's heritage and humanity, we overturn at the root any holy justification for the dehumanizing of anybody in expressions of one's own identity. It's the end of war on nature and evil, the end of the patriarchal, ego-driven, ethnocentric model of holy empire that has been our planetary curse, a catastrophe cycle we call the brief span of history. You know it, the story of the great leader, the story of his inch of progress for a mile of blood that shapes our very idea of the way it has to be. This is in the way of human evolution. Nothing natural about it, nothing to be afraid of in walking out on it, and a great deal to gain. Thanks to Minoans, Sea Peoples, and Philistines, we can see that a very successful Western way was changed, like a failed experiment, a departure from older and healthier norms, so we know we can change it again. I hope you'll take the journey. The Sea Peoples took our hardest lesson first. People are good unless they get too much power. Our heritage, our fate, is not a cycle of stumbling autocrats and their needless, worsening catastrophes. It's an ancient, inventive, eclectic, dynamic, steady state, a human household of benefit to every member in this eternal now of nature's cycles. With our human flaws and our differences held together by the bonds that we build and maintain around the cycles of life, nature, and the body. Those are accurate descriptions of the archaeology. That's what worked for us the longest. The garden is remembering we're in it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy these stories, and it'll be great to hear from you. Just click and explore the links to new facts, to visual, scientific resources, stories, and lots of discussion. I know you'll come to good things and good people because that's what we are. Peace.